What exactly is a stereo imager? Well, what it does is it can change how narrow or how wide the stereo spectrum is on your mastered track, which is a very cool little tool to use when you're mastering. And the good news is that Final Touch here on the iPad has a stereo imager. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can use it. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today, where at the moment I'm helping you learn how to use Final Touch, the mastering app here on the iPad so that you can release your best music. And in this one, we're taking a look at the Stereo Imager, which is a slightly misunderstood, but can be a very handy module to use in your mastering process. So let's jump into the iPad now and take a look. Here we are in Final Touch on my iPad, and here is the Stereo Imager module. What we need to do is tap and drag down into our chain, just like we do with the rest of our plugins, and now it's added. So let's go through the interface of the Stereo Imager. Like the rest of our plugins, we have a power button here in the top left. So if we don't want to drag it, we can just turn the power off and back on again to add the plugin. And we also have our preset. So in this one, we have a focus low end, narrow the image, a widespread and wider with bass intact because our stereo imager can not only make our stereo spectrum wider, it can also make it narrower, which we'll show in this demonstration. Let's take a look at our controls. The first in the top left is our mono filter. Now this acts as a filter to ensure that our low end doesn't actually get included in the stereo increasing or decreasing. So if you've got your, your kick drum or your bass line, you don't want those included, you can dial in your mono filter and then anything below that frequency won't be included when the processing is done on the stereo spectrum. At the bottom here, we have our pan adjustments. So we have our left pan. If we want to bring the left pan in closer to the center or even over to the right, we can do that. And we also have the same over here on the right where we can make our mix narrower or even swap our channels completely. But if we want to actually flip our channels up the top left here, we have a flip channel button, which will instantly flip our left and our right channels. And to flip them back, we just turn that off again. We can also flip the phase of our left and right channel. So down the bottom here, we have our left channel phase and our right channel phase. Now, if you don't know about phase and you don't know what that does, probably best to leave it alone. But if you want to be able to flip the phase on your left and right channels of your mix, you can do that there. And finally, we have the mono and stereo buttons. So when you start working with the stereo spectrum, you do want to put your mix back into mono to make sure that the changes you've made haven't cancelled out some sort of instrument or you're not missing something when you flick it back to mono. Because especially these days, a lot of people are listening in mono on things like the speakers of smartphones. So you do want to make sure your mix translates into mono before you go ahead and release it. So let's reset our stereo imager here and we've got it enabled in our chain here. Let's just listen to this song first before we make any adjustments. This is my track called Six and Eight. Now I found a reason I should die. Now the first thing you might notice there is that this, like most of our plugins, adds some extra gain. So we're going to have to dial our output down a little bit. So we'll just drop that down to minus three for now. Don't worry for going too quiet on your output gain. You can always dial it back up, but it's better to get it out of that clipping zone to start with. Now let's go to one of our presets here. Let's first go to our widespread because what most people are going to want to do is widen their mix. So let's go with the default widespread, which gives us 7.9 dB of stereo width here. And let's hit play and see what it sounds like. And there would be romance around the corner. Ten years. So you can see that it has really widened our mix, but hopefully you can hear that it sounds absolutely awful. It increased the dB, increased the gain so much, and it pushed it so wide that it started clipping again, even though we were already down here. And it just sounded awful. It started cancelling out the vocals. So this is why you have to be super careful and super subtle if you're going to use a stereo spread plugin like this. Let's bring the stereo width back up. Let's go with something a little more conservative and put this around 2 dB. And we'll drop the gain down here on the output. And let's have a listen. So that's not too bad. Let's just turn it on and off and we'll just listen to the difference between the original mix and with this widespread. Working mortgage and kids Wouldn't change it for quiz Only 
So it definitely impacts the sound and it can sound good, but again, you have to be really careful that it's not gonna actually do more damage than good when you use a plugin like this. Now, the other thing we can do here is let's listen in mono to make sure it hasn't impacted our mono mix. So I'll play it in stereo and then we'll switch to mono and watch the meters and listen to the track. Wish there was more time to go dancing. So what you can hear there is there's some artificial kind of some phase issues and some artifacts that are being put into this track by doing this. So I'm not saying that the stereo imager is all bad. It can actually do some good things and it can be handy if you've got the right sort of track. But like most of our modules, use it with as much subtlety as you can to get the best results. Now, the other thing I mentioned we can do is we can actually narrow our image. So if we tap narrow here, now it's brought the stereo width in. It doesn't have any mono filter here. It's just going to bring everything in more narrow so let's hit play on this one now more time to go dancing and again we'll turn it off and turn it back on just so you can hear the mix being more narrow time after time we are standing in line and we're making the most of each rhyme and what you're hearing there is it makes it a little bit more upfront and present. So for some of your tracks, don't think that wider is always better. Sometimes you might have some instruments that are too wide and bringing them in a little bit narrower is actually going to help your mix. Now, I did mention the phase buttons before, so let's just see what they actually do if we turn them on. We'll hit play and I'll turn, I'll switch the phase on the left and the right. And you can just take a listen. Here's one. So you can hear it does make a difference to the sound, but again, unless you're having phase issues, I would leave those phase buttons alone and leave it in its default settings. So you might be thinking this isn't a great advertisement for the stereo imager, but it does work with some of your tracks. So it's worth trying if your track just isn't sounding right and you really want it to pop in a different way. So test it out. But before we finish up, let's recap what we've covered in this video. So like most of our modules, we can enable it by dragging it down here into our effects chain or using the power button in the top left to turn it off and on. And right next to it, we also have our preset selection so we can change the preset, which will change all of the values for this plugin. We have our mono filter to filter out any frequencies before they go through the stereo processing. And we have left and right pan adjustments as well as phase buttons here for the left and the right. We also have our stereo width dial where we can increase the stereo width with or decrease the stereo width for a more narrow mix. And we have that all important output over the side here to make sure that we're not clipping our signal. Finally, we have our controls at the top where we can flip the left and right channels completely, or we can go into mono mode to make sure our mix still translates into mono and then back into stereo. There you have it, the Stereo Imager, another great tool for our mastering toolkit here in Final Touch on the iPad. Now, you'll want to be subscribed to the channel because coming up, we'll be looking at the Maximizer. That's in our next video where we look at the brick wall limiter, arguably the most important part of the mastering process. There's more videos linked down below, and I hope I see you on the next video.